Welcome to this video from In 28 Minute. Thanks for all your love which helped us to grow to 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and more than 46,000 students on Udemy. You can find more about us on our website www.in28minutes.com. This video is a part of series of 100 plus videos celebrating my 15 years of experience with programming, design and architecture. In these videos, we talk about how to become a good programmer and a good architect. We also talk about Java related frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies other than the varied range of tools that we make use of. You can find more details in the description of the video. Welcome back. In this video, we'll look at something called code quality. This is quite a famous term. I mean, if you have worked in the industry for more than five years, I'm sure you would have heard this thing called code quality. Code quality is, uh, yeah, it's quite a unpopular term, I would say. Uh, technical debt is also something which is used to describe this. It's basically a measure of how good your application is. I mean, how maintainable your application is, how readable your code is, how good your design is. So basically, uh, when I develop something, uh, I would want somebody else to be able to maintain it very easily. And if my code has very bad quality, then you would have, uh, like, then it would be difficult to maintain it over a period of time. And that's what code quality kinds of measures. There are a lot of tools which are used uh, for code quality that is called static analysis where you actually look at the code and see whether it meets all the standards, whether what is the line length of a method, what is the length of a class, how many classes are there in a package, how many like standards are violated. So there are tools like Sonar Cube. I mean, it's now called Sonar Cube, so it's no longer Sonar, it's a Sonar Cube, which is really good static analysis tool which can try and give you an overview of code quality. The other tools, I mean, it chooses Checkstyle, PMD, Feinberg. So those are all really good tools to look at, uh, to do static analysis, to find out uh, the code quality. And also the other important thing that you need to do uh, for code quality is have peer reviews in place. So those are I mean, static analysis and peer reviews are kind of the most important things that are done typically in all projects to ensure code quality. So now let's look at my perspective of how code quality can be achieved in a project. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, code quality is really an attitude thing. So either a team has the attitude towards maintaining good code. I mean, uh, if, if you really ha heard about this thing called Boy Scout, uh, Bo Boy Scout rule. So basically, Boy Scout rule says uh, a scout, you're a good scout when any camp place that you go to you leave it in a better place when you leave than when you came in. So same thing with code. So it's an attitude. So either the team has an attitude to improve the code quality or it does not. So the attitude to refactor when something is wrong, the attitude to be a boy scout. So most important thing as an architect or as a designer, so one of the most important things is to create such an environment where code quality is really appreciated. So again, I mean, there are always some bad sheep who take it to the extent that every minute detail is discussed uh, for hours together. I mean, you should know what is important and what is not. So there should be an environment where important things related to code quality are appreciated. That's number one. The other thing is obviously static analysis, having good static analysis and making the static analysis part of your continu continuous integration setup. So it's not sufficient if you have static analysis, but it's important to make sure that somebody is looking at it. So somebody is looking at it, make sure that they are part of your definition of done so that they are looked at it at the end of this sprint. So you kind of show them to the product owner at the end of every sprint so that a product owner knows that the static analysis of a specific project is good. Most important thing is static analysis is not really the aim because the most important factors related to code quality is readable code. How good are your variable names? How good are your method names? How good are your classes designed? And those kind of stuff are not really measured by your static analysis. Static analysis can say the coverage of code is 80%, but is it really that the 80% of functionality is tested? Do you really have good assets? 
Do you really have readable tests? I mean, those are things which static analysis cannot measure. So the way I look at it is static analysis is just a signal. It's just a signal that something, if a project has bad static analysis, then it's a clear indication that people are not worried about code quality. But if a project has good static analysis, that is not really, I mean, not really a sufficient condition. There should also be peer review in place to make sure that code is readable. So static analysis does not cover every part of it. So having good peer review practices in place is also very, very important. And also one important thing I would really suggest is to make sure you are using pair programming. So is pair programming productive or not? Is it really useful to have a couple of developers looking at everything? Uh, that's a different debate altogether, but at least whenever there's a new project, I mean, new person joining the project, new pro programmer joining the project. So until he gets uh, comfortable with everything, pair programming is a great tool. And pair programming is also a really great tool when you're implementing a new, let's say a framework or a new complex functionality or you're designing something new. In those kind of situations, I would really recommend to do pair programming as well. So. Uh, again, uh, one of the most important things is like related to code quality is code reviews, right? So code reviews, uh, it's very important that the attitude towards code reviews is such that I'm not trying to find defects with somebody. So I'm not trying to go and find what is the problem with somebody else's code. No, that's, that's definitely should not be the aim for finding code, I mean, for doing code reviews. The aim of the code review should be to really add value to the application. I mean, so... I have 10 years of experience and when I'm reviewing somebody else's code, I should try and give my experience to him and try and help them come up with better code. That's, that's really the attitude you need to have when you're trying to approach a code review. There you go. So those are the really important things that I think are important to have good code quality in a project. For me, the most important coding standards that I would really look at are how good are your methods named how well are your uh, classes named your size so if there's a large class size or there are a lot of dependencies between classes then that's a very bad sign another thing i really look at when i look at code quality is the quality of your unit test i mean when i go and read a unit test i'll be able to tell within uh, a minute like i open the largest unit test which is there and i see it i'd be able to tell whether the uh, application code would be good or not because a unit test uh, like gives you a lot of signals like uh, if unit test is very complex then it means the code I mean there are a lot of dependencies and if the unit test is not readable then that means that some people are not really taking care of their readability of the code so those are the important things I would really care about when I uh, talk about code quality until the next video thanks for watching this video we created this video to celebrate my 15 years of experience with design, architecture and programming. We have created two complete Git repositories for you. Java Technology for Beginners and Java Best Practices. Java Best Practices covers my 15 years of experience with design patterns, code quality, design, architecture and modern development practices. We talk about REST services, SOAP web services, microservices, cloud native applications, four principles of simple design, among a varied range of other topics. Tells you how to become a good programmer, designer or an architect. Java Technology for Beginners focuses on the frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies and tools related to application development. You can find link to the repositories in the description of the video. In 28 minutes has some of the highest rated courses on varied range of topics. You can find more information on our website www.in28minutes.com.